Him and praise Him and give Him glory and thanks. And as we do that, remember that the Spirit of the Lord is on you. Is He this morning? Is He walking with you? Talking with you? Ministering to you? I hope so. I hope so. The value of relationship is found in your walk with the Lord. Father, we thank you for this day. We give you praise and we give you honor and we give you glory. Fill this place with your spirit, O oh Lord. Use this time for your glory. Lord, right now, speak to us. Minister to us. Pour out your spirit upon us as we worship you and magnify you and praise you today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Mary, come and share scripture with us this morning. This is Romans 8.37. Yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For inasmuch in everything we are to gain mastery by the means of Jesus, by the active love of God for his people. Amen. Amen. There we go. All right. Everybody sing today. Go ahead. Serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. I know that He is living. Whatever men may say. I see his hand of mercy, I hear his voice of cheer, and just the time I need him, he's always near. He lives, he lives, Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way he lives he lives salvation to impart you ask me how i know he lives he lives within my heart rejoice rejoice O christian Lift up your voice and sing Eternal hallelujah To Jesus Christ the King The hope of all who seek Him The help of all who find None other is so loving So good and kind Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives, salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. can face tomorrow he walks with me and talks 
with me along life's narrow way. He lives, He lives, salvation to impart. You ask me how I know He lives, He lives within my heart. You ask me how I know He lives, He lives within my heart. Lord, I come to you, let my heart be changed, renewed, flowing from the grace that I found in you. And Lord, I've come to know weaknesses I see in me will be stripped away by the power of your love hold me close let your love surround me bring Draw me to your side, and as I wait, I'll rise up like the eagle, and I will soar with you. Your spirit leads me on, and the power of your Unveil my eyes, let me see you face to face, the knowledge of your love as you live in me. And Lord, renew my mind as your will unfolds in my life in living every day by the power of your love hold me close let your love surround me Bring And as I wait, I'll rise up like the eagle, and I will soar with you. Your spirit leads me on, and the power of your Your spirit leads me on in the power of your love. I will soar with you. Your spirit leads me on by the power of your love. And I will soar with you. 
your spirit leads me on by the power of your love. stars I hear the rolling thunder thy power throughout the universe display then sings my soul my Savior God to thee how great thou shall come with shout of acclamation and lead me home what joy shall fill my heart then I shall bow with humble adoration and then proclaim my God, how great Thou art, then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art, then sings my soul. Merciful Savior, precious Redeemer and friend, who would have thought that a lamb could rescue the souls of men? Oh, you rescue the souls of men. Counselor, Comforter, Keeper, Spirit we long to embrace. 
You offer hope when our hearts have hopelessly lost our way. Oh, we've hopelessly lost our way. You are the one that we praise. You are the one we adore. You give the healing and grace. Our hearts always hunger for. Oh, our hearts always hunger for. Father, faithfully loving your own, here in our weakness you find us falling before your throne. Oh, we're falling before your throne. always hunger for oh our hearts always hunger for you are the one that we praise you are the one we adore you give the healing and grace our Hearts always hunger for Oh, our hearts always hunger for Pastor Hallelujah 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 Praise you, O Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Father, right now, let your anointing come down on this place. Let your presence fill us, Lord, marvelously this morning. Holy Spirit, begin to do a work that is powerful and real and important and not just something, Lord, that is a fix, but something that becomes a lifestyle. And Father, right now, as your anointing fills this place, fill us with your presence. In that Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Amen. I need to do something real quick. It's just like the enemy to have my phone start texting me as I get ready to get up to minister, but I have a word this morning that is a word of importance, but not only is it of importance, but I believe that the presence of the Holy Spirit 
wants to do something mightily within our midst as we go forth. And I have to do another thing here because I can't. Forgive me, folks. When you can't get your Bible to be where it needs to be, then you got some problems. How many know God's good? Turn to somebody and say this. Let God turn you on this morning. Let God turn you on this morning. I have my notes, and for you that, that do take them and, and have them with you, I am not promising I'm going to stay with them this morning. I'm feeling an anointing of the Holy Spirit that is simply powerful. And I don't know if you feel it, but I know at least up here I, I'm feeling something. And the Lord is speaking to my heart about you and I being turned on and flipping the switch to be activated in the supernatural. I read an article in Elijah's List, and a lot of this is from that. And I'm going to have the author, I'm going to ask forgiveness uh, for using some of his stuff uh, this morning, and, you know, I, I guess I'm going to use it and then ask forgiveness later. Uh, yeah, but I, I believe he's right on. Although some of it is mine, some of it is that. But I, how many of you ever been doing devotionals and just sitting and, and you just felt the presence of the Lord so strongly and and, and just just filling the room as you studied the Word. And, and as I began to study the Word, the Lord spoke to me because there's been several events that's happened in the last few weeks where I'm seeing that. One of them was with a little girl who was born with a hole in her heart and God healed her and sent her home in two weeks. You all know we prayed about that. The last one was a good friend of Becky and I, Ted Albrick, who used to pastor in Illinois and who is now a missionary to Cambodia and has been for the last several years. His right-hand man who runs the farm or farms there of their orphanages where they feed kids that have been abandoned had a massive, massive stroke. And it was pretty pretty serious because when it first happened, Ted said pray and sent out a message to pray. Well, folks, I've, I've got some bad news for the devil because after nine days, that man who had a severe stroke was up and back at his job. That's the power of God. We have people here that we need to continue to pray for. God trumps everything. I'm praying for Shane. He's a young man that, that I knew as, and I still see him as that five-year-old kid, although I know it's, he's not a five-year-old kid this morning, who God is ministering to, and as we pray, those tumors are beginning to shrink. I'm praying for not only shrinkage, but I'm praying for them to vanish in Jesus' name. We need to be activated in the supernatural. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to John chapter 14, verses 12 through 14 this morning. Jesus is speaking here, and, and he says something very, very significant. He says, most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. And greater works than these he will do, because I go to my Father. And whatever you ask in my name, I will do it, 
that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Will you say something this morning and repeat those last four words with me? I will do it. Father, right now, we thank you for your promise. We thank you, Lord, for your spirit. We thank you for your word. Father, right now, I ask that you do something marvelous within our life, transforming within our life, moving within our life. And Father, I just give you praise and I give you glory in Jesus' name for it. Lord, right now, cause us, Lord, to understand how to be activated in the spirit. Two more I, I didn't mention to you, and I forgot to mention. Many of you know that uh, we've been praying for, for Barry Black for a long time, Bill's brother. And uh, I got news for you. The hospital can't keep you down when Jesus is in it. Uh, I got word just on Friday that um, they have purchased a special van for Barry, and Barry is planning on making his first trip back out to Iowa in the very near future. That's pretty good for, from a man who is laying on his deathbed, that God is raising him up, and I'm believing for complete healing. And in Bill's life, I, I didn't get a chance to tell you. I didn't know a lot of it, and I chewed him out. Uh, I'll admit that I love him enough, and he is my mentor, but I, I still have enough guts to, to love him enough to chew him out. Bill went through three or two, two surgeries back-to-back -back that we didn't know about. Um with gallstones and stuff like that, that that were coming. He went through the first one, they thought they got them all, and then uh, they found out that they didn't get them all, so he had to go right back in and go through another surgery. And uh, as I looked at that, I, I said, Bill, why didn't you call us? Why didn't you pray? And I'd been praying for Bill, and I didn't know why, but the Lord just began to deal with me to pray for him. But Bill is coming back from, from those, and God is healing them out of, out of those. And, and I'm excited about that because I'm going to begin to have him come and share his testimony. One of the most beautiful things in the world is eventually I'm going to make a, a request for both Bill and Barry to come and, and share Jesus and what God's done in their life. Our God's a God of healing. See, one of the most exciting signs that we are in a season of global renewal is that amazing miracles and healings are taking place all around the world. All around the world. And I've mentioned that just here and given you examples of that. The greatest harvest and renewal that is emerging in this historic season will be a pouring out of the presence of the Holy Spirit. How many of you can say this morning, Lord, pour out your Holy Spirit on me. Let me, let me be, be what you want me to be. Let me be a walking lightning rod for your presence. See, we as believers will experience the supernatural like never before. The Holy Spirit is working like never before. It's almost like the runners that I watched the other day. I was flipping through the channels and they were having the Olympic trials. And they, they had something called the 5,000 meters. And let me tell you something, that's several miles. I'm not sure how, how long it is. But, you know, mine is five meters. And I'll be lucky if I can make it. But these guys are running and running and running and they're all bunched together until that last quarter to a half a mile. And then all of a sudden this one guy, 
I don't know how he did it because I'd be half dead by the time. Turns it on. And he's flying. He's, he's way back. Oh, he'll never catch up. He'll never catch up. And all of a sudden he starts flying. And he flies by the pack. And not only does he fly by the pack, he runs in the first place and he runs past them. And in that last little bit, he's taking off and leaving the crowd behind. Let me tell you something. The Holy Spirit is beginning to take off and leave the devil behind in this day. Acts chapter 2 verse 17 says this. And it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your young men shall see visions, your old men shall dream dreams. I will pour out my spirit. Jesus wants to pour out his spirit on you this morning. There's four practical ways to step into the supernatural ministry and begin walking in a new measure of signs, wonders, and miracles. The first one is pretty obvious. Surrender to Jesus. Let Jesus have his way in your life. I'm going to say something that I'm beginning to believe. Surrendering to Jesus is harder said than done. It's harder to say I surrender to Jesus than just doing it. Why? Because there is a freedom in really surrendering to him and those people who say, yeah, I, I need to surrender to Jesus are the ones that have all the hard time because they're not surrendered. The first thing, if you want to walk in the supernatural, if you want to walk in the Holy Spirit, is to surrender to Jesus. If we want to live the supernatural life, we actually have to surrender to him. We must quit trying to do things in our own strength. I can do it myself. You're going to screw it up. In a lot of things, I've, I used to think that I could do everything myself. You know what I found out as I've grown older? Here's a little secret. You ready? You might know just enough to be dangerous. You might know just enough to screw it up. How many of you have ever had a project that you've done? or started to do, and you got halfway through it, and you realized you've messed it up worse than if you would have called somebody who knew how to do it in the first place. And it cost you more in time, effort, and money. See, we must realize that God is the only one who can bring fruit through our efforts. It's the Holy Spirit that brings fruit. The fruit of the Spirit is important. We have to quit wondering whether we are special enough or good enough for God to use. Can I tell you something? If you are special enough or if you are good enough for God to use, God won't use you. End of story. He won't use you. Why? Because he's not looking at the people who have all kinds of ability. He's looking for somebody willing. He's not looking for somebody who has the right type of formula to produce supernatural events. If you don't believe me, look at the seven sons of Siva. Going around trying to perform miracles in Jesus' name, who they didn't know. And then they ran against a real demon and got their clock cleaned. Folks, I want you to know Jesus 
so that you don't get your clock cleaned. Establish in your thoughts once and for all that God has chosen you to do the works of Jesus. Turn to somebody and say, God's chosen you. Well, what do I mean? 1 Peter 2.9 For you are a chosen generation. And in, boy, if that doesn't fit right this generation today, I don't know. You are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. The only thing that you need to know is Jesus and him crucified. The only thing you need to know is that he died for me and I live for him. Follow Jesus just like you follow the Father and you'll do the works. Totally immerse in yourself in the river of God. <clears throat> totally immerse yourself in the river of God. The second key about being full of the Holy Spirit as you completely immerse yourself in the river of God. The river represents the Holy Spirit in our allowing him to have total control in our lives and our ministry. And when I say ministry, listen to me very carefully. All of you have a ministry. It's called servanthood. Wherever you're serving, whether it be your job, whether it be with your friends, whether whatever you do, it's, that's your ministry. Be completely immersed in the river of God. When the angel brought Ezekiel out far enough in the river, he was in such death that he no longer had control but was overpowered by the water. I challenge you this week to read Ezekiel 47. It's a beautiful story, and I'm, I'm not taking a lot of time to deal with it. Again, he measured 1,000, and it was a river that I could not cross, for the water was too deep, water in which one must swim, a river that could not be crossed. Let me tell you something. The story in Ezekiel there takes Ezekiel from wading in the water and the angel taking him out deeper and deeper and deeper until the water would envelop him and he couldn't do it. And the current was so strong he couldn't swim. But the angel lifted him up and put him back on the bank. What God is wanting to tell us is he wants us to get immersed in the Holy Spirit so the Holy Spirit can take us where we need to go. He's able. See, this is a picture of where God wants us to be. The place is in total surrender to the Holy Spirit. Lord, use me. You know, I thought of that, that song, Sweet, Sweet Anointing. Sweet Anointing. Flowing down. Flowing down. The anointing this morning in the Holy Spirit is flowing down on you. See, it's much more than just being born again. It's much more than salvation. You know, Jesus does a lot at salvation. How many of you agree with that? But he's got a whole lot more for you. See, salvation is kindergarten. But you learn a lot between kindergarten and high school. You learn a lot between being a child and being an adult. Walking in complete surrender to the Holy Spirit is much more than salvation. You and I are meant to offer our whole being, spirit, soul, and body to God as a living sacrifice. Romans, well, we'll get there in a minute. Allow the presence of, of God to, and the Holy Spirit to permeate fill, and influence every area of your life. Now let's read Romans chapter 12. And I've said this before from the pulpit, and it's very true. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable God, which is your reasonable service. It's nothing special. 
In other words, what am I saying? I am saying you being immersed in the Holy Spirit, moving in the presence of God, praying for people, seeing them recover, allowing the Holy Spirit to work to you is only reasonable service. Oh, that's special. No, it's reasonable service. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is good and acceptable and the perfect will of God. When you lay hands on somebody, you need to understand something. You're not laying hands on them on your own accord. You're laying hands on them through the power and the presence of Jesus that the Holy Spirit works through that and you become a lightning rod of his presence that you see the power of God move and healing be displayed. You are only a conduit. You are not the source. Allow the Holy Spirit to transform our lives and we'll stay in the realm of overflow, continually receiving the Father's love and giving it away to others. The river of God, according to the Gospel of John, now actually flows within us. You're the river. What is the most dangerous thing when a power line comes down What's the most dangerous thing in a storm when a power line comes down? Do you know? Anybody? Water. water. The water on the ground. The water. Why? Because it becomes a conduit. And actually, if that power comes down and hits the water, all you've got to do is step in the water to see what? Boom. Let me tell you something. The power of the Holy Spirit's come down. You're full of the water. You ought to be electrified to move in people's life. It's a natural thing to walk in the supernatural if you give Jesus everything. And as I begin to look at that, I begin to see some things. John chapter 7, verses 37 and 38 on the last day, the great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried out, saying, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. You're connected to the electricity. Get ready to become a conduit. Not only does the river flow, but the power of God works with us to heal the sick. I love this story, mainly because it kind of puts the religious people in, play, in their place. And I, I probably shouldn't, but my natural instinct about the story in Luke chapter 5 is, is to say, Ah, you needed that. How many of you ever seen somebody that were so heavenly minded they were no earthly good and something happens and you thought in your mind ha they needed that god get them come on it's natural now it happened on a certain day as he was preaching there were pharisees and teachers of the law sitting by waiting for him to slip up that that's uh Mr. and Mrs. Righteousness in the church, you know, I'm more righteous than you. Who had come out of every town of Galilee, Judea, and Jerusalem. That means that there were quite a few of them. And the power of the Lord was present to heal them. Let me tell you something. If you stay humble and you believe God, God will heal that person who feels that they are so self-righteous God will convict them of their sin and you can be a conduit of his presence to see them move in the presence of God. Strip away all of that self-reliance that they live under. And let me tell you, we've got a lot of people in America today that are living in self-reliance and not relying on Jesus and the Holy Spirit. 
lot of people in the church today, oh, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. Are you? Is the power of the Lord present in your life? Is it present in your life? Is the presence of Jesus present in your life? Actually, let me tell you something. Because some of you, I, I, I know the thought right now. The Lord's already told me. Some of you thought, well, I don't know if the presence of the Lord is power and that His power is present in my life. Let me tell you something. It is. Turn on the switch. God has called you to do a mighty work in Him and you are able. Do not accept the devil's lies any longer. Get in the river and stay in the river. Get in the water. Allow the water and the river of the Holy Spirit to plunge, your, in, plunge yourself into the water spiritually, physically, and mentally. See, God will tell you mentally and emotionally that you're not eligible. Or, I mean, I'm sorry, the devil will tell you that mentally and emotionally you're not, a, you're not eligible. But God will tell you you're my child. I love you. The things that's happened in your life are things that I want to use so that you can mentor others so that they can come through the situation that you come through and have an easier time doing it. Mentally, emotionally, physically, and spiritually. Plunge yourself in to the water. I'm going to do something here for just a moment. I want you all to stand. Get your hands free. We're going to do something that's a little bit different this morning. Now I want you to grab hands around somebody here so that we make a complete circle, complete unit. Grab a hold. I'm going to drag you all out. Here in a minute. I'm coming down here too. Now look, listen to me very carefully. We're all connected to one another, right? How many of you brought Jesus with you? How many of you know as we begin to pray today and ask God to do something today that the Lord's going to do something mightily and powerfully and within our lives, as we move in his presence, in his glory, in his power, and we're going to allow the Holy Spirit to do something. The word says a threefold cord shall not be broken. There's more than threefold cords here. Okay? Now, you ready? Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, let the Holy Spirit begin to flow through us, Lord, as a, a unit. Father, that there will be no weak links, Lord, in this. And Lord, right now flow through us, Lord, right now through your spirit. Jesus, have your way right now. Electrify us, Lord, in your presence and in your glory and in your power. In Jesus' name, we give you praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Listen to me. We are now a conduit of his praise. There is no weak links in the chain because those who feel they are weak are not relying on themselves, but they're relying on others as we rely on the Holy Spirit. Amen? And I'm sorry for you folks on video, but if you don't know, the entire church is gathered behind the camera here, together, holding hands, believing for God that we might be a conduit for his love. And the third thing is contend for spiritual healing. The third key is to be proactive in your faith and contend for spiritual healing. 
contend for spiritual healing. Listen to me very carefully. Your relationship with Jesus Christ should not be reactive. It should be proactive. What am I talking about? Jude chapter 3, the third verse in Jude in the New Testament says it. Beloved, I was very diligent to write you concerning the common salvation. Look at, you got that? The common salvation. But look at, I found it necessary to write to you, exhorting you to contend earnestly for the faith which was once, uh, once for all delivered to the saints. What's he saying? He's saying, there's a common salvation, but there's a greater step. There's a more powerful step, being a conduit for the presence of Jesus. Notice Jacob, when he wrestled with the angel, angel in Genesis, in Genesis chapter 32, then Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him until the breaking of day. Now when he saw that he did not prevail against him, he touched the socket of his hip. And the socket of Jacob's hip was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, let me go for the day breaks. But Jacob said, I will not let go unless you bless me. Don't let go of God until he blesses you. Don't let go of God until he blesses you. Let him bless you this morning. Let him come down upon you with his presence and such an anointing that you just begin to walk with him. Be equipped as an ambassador of Christ. The fourth key is to walk in faith as God wants every believer equipped for the work of of ministry. Be equipped as an ambassador of Christ. Turn to somebody now and say, I'm an ambassador of Christ. You ready? Now, how can I be an ambassador of Christ when I feel so puny? Get over yourself and allow God to have his way. Ephesians chapter 4 says this. You ready? And he gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Can I say something to you? Are you a believer this morning? Amen. What ministry do you have? Huh? Let me repeat that. Are you a believer this morning? What ministry do you have? Are you a prophet? Are you an apostle? Are you an evangelist? Are you a pastor? Are you a teacher? Because you have to be one of those. Oh, not me. That's for leadership. Baloney. Okay? It doesn't stand up to what Jesus has for you. Why? Because these are for the equipping of the saints for the work of ministry, servanthood. God has given you a, a thing, a gifting, to equip other saints and for the work that he has you to do in servanthood and in ministry. 
So you've looked at that scripture and said, for too long. Oh, that's for somebody else. I, I, I know wonderful apostles. I know wonderful apostles. I know wonderful prophets. I know wonderful evangelists. I know wonderful pastors. I know wonderful teachers. The question is, you need to ask God this morning, who are you? What ministry do you hold? What message are you giving? For the edifying of the body of Christ, listen, until we all come to the unity of the faith and to the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to the measure of a statue or stature of the fullness of Christ. And you, when you see that word perfect, nine times out of ten in, in the word, what can you change that to? And mature. mature. You catch it? Do we all come to the unity of faith and to the knowledge of the Son of God to a mature man or woman of God? God wants us to proclaim a few different things this morning. Number one, preach this message. Heaven, kingdom, realm is accessible and close enough for you to touch. Reach out and touch the Lord as he walks by. Let me tell you something. His presence isn't walking by this morning. It's surrounding you. We must continually be, bring healing to lepers and those who are sick. You know who the lepers are? The lepers are the ones who've been thrown out. The lepers are the ones who have been told by the world and by the church they're unclean. They have no value. Let me tell you something. I need you to proclaim over your family, those who are not living for Jesus, you proclaim their value in Christ Jesus and what he promised and say, God, right now in the name of Jesus, let the devil take his hands off of them and you begin to move in the presence and power of God. And I'm going to tell you something that I haven't said from the pulpit before. There are about four kids in this church that are not living for Jesus the way they ought to, that have anointing on their life, and I'm praying that God brings them back with anointing and power and authority so that they begin to walk in Jesus. Like never before, I talked to them one, of, one of them this week. He says, yeah, I drove by the church, and immediately... I said to him over the phone, I says, it's nice that you drove by the church. Why don't you drive in once in a while? Hear me. The enemy is working hard to destroy. But the Holy Spirit can overcome that if you'll believe. Okay, Lord. I'm going to say this too. I knew there was a place where God was going to stop me. Even before I began this. This is it. Some of us have children and family members who years ago said, Jesus, be Lord of my life, and they've walked away. And there's an anointing on them. In the past two to three years, the enemy has come to destroy each and every one of them. 
And I'm, I can name names. As I was praying this week, God spoke to my heart. There are children of the parents of this church that there's anointing on them and they have walked away from the power and the presence of God. The enemy had it planned because the enemy knows what influence they will become for the presence of God if they turn their life back to him. And he's working overtime. He's destroying marriages. He's causing sin to be so prevalent that they've given up on God. He's making rifts between father and son, mother and daughter. And I don't say this lightly, but I'm telling you right now, as I prayed God, what God was speaking to my heart, and I, I felt it this morning, I wasn't even going to bring this up. But I'm telling you right now, you're a conduit of the presence of the Holy Spirit. We're a conduit of the presence of the Holy Spirit. We need to bind together and begin to pray that God would restore what the devil has taken Amen. and get ready to restore them. Now listen. To me very carefully when I say this because I am going to say this to you some of you have been dis so destroyed by your past that you thought you don't have a future and that's the exact spirit that has jumped upon the you that has jumped on your kids. I am saying right now, you need to proclaim to Jesus that you have a future and you have a hope. And you need to break the chains of the enemy within your family, within this church's family. I will say that of my own children. That they're not walking in the presence of God like they need to walk. And I don't say it to be mean or nasty. But I do know that the Holy Spirit isn't walking on with them like He used to. And I'm asking God to give them back what the devil has stolen. Amen. Amen. How many got kids in this place, all over this place? How many got kids that you're going to say, yeah, that has to happen. That has to happen in Jesus' name. We have kids that are going down the wrong path because of of rebellion. In at least 80% of the situations, not all, but 80%, I would imagine, I, I've heard these words, I don't like authority. I don't like authority. If that has been said by your child, listen to me very carefully. The reason why they don't like authority is the one who does not want the authority of Jesus in their life is blinding them from the authority of Jesus and the life-giving power that it brings through the conduct of the Holy Spirit. Do you understand what I'm saying? God's going to do a work. I am tired of the enemy taking advantage of our children. Amen. Even to the point, and I've heard this from some of your children, I don't believe there's a God anymore. If you don't believe there's a God, that's fine. 
The devil's blinded your eyes. It's time for us as a child, church to go to prayer and believe that God would show you his presence again. Matthew chapter 10, verses 7 and 8, as you go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons. Freely you've received, freely give. How many of you received Jesus this morning? How many of you know that if we've received him freely, we need to start giving? In our hearts and in our lives and in the presence. As new covenant believers and ambassadors of Christ, we simply need to know who our God is and who we are in him. I can do all things through Christ who strengtheneth me. I am a child of the Most High God. I serve a risen Savior. He's in my life today. You sang it this morning. I know that he has risen whatever men may say. Can I, can I change that a little bit? Forgive me, the author of the song. I know that he's living whatever my children might say. I see his hand of mercy. I hear his voice of cheer. And just the time we need him, he's always near. We're going to bind together and pray for our children. Who am I in Christ? What right do I have to pray these prayers? First, you're a new creation. You are a new creation. Old things have passed away. All things have become new. You are a child of God. Thirdly, you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Know ye not, know ye not, ye are the temple. Don't you know you're the temple of the Holy Spirit? Fourthly, you will see that nothing is impossible. And fifthly, just step out in faith and believe God for the miraculous. I want to end with this verse. From Luke chapter 1, verses 37. For with God, nothing will be impossible. You believe that? Would you just stand with me and just lift your hands to heaven? Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I lift my hands before you. And Lord, we as a congregation lift our hands before you and we begin to proclaim that you're Lord. And Father, right now, as a child of God, Lord, we begin to stand in for our children. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, we proclaim, Satan, you must take your hands off our children. And Lord, that there would be a tremendous flow of your presence. And Lord, that the Holy Spirit would flood them so that they have no place to turn, that they can go no place other than to call you Lord again, Lord, so that you can pick them up and put them on the shore. Lord, as Ezekiel went in the water, put them in the water of your presence. And Lord, overflow them, immerse them in your presence so they have no place else to turn but to you. And Father, we just give you praise and we give you glory and we thank you and we say, Satan, in the name of Jesus, we proclaim that our kids are coming back and you have no right to them and Satan, in the name of Jesus, let them go. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Do that work.
of your presence and of your power and of your authority. How many of you know that he's able to do that work? Amen. Amen. He is able and he will do it because he's real and he's able. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let the sweet anointing of the presence of God flow in you this morning. Be a conduit. Know that when you reach out to shake people's hands, that the Holy Spirit is shaking hands. And if you've been praying for somebody, don't tell them that you're praying for them. Just shake their hand and say, Hallelujah. Glad to see you. And leave a little bit of the presence of Jesus behind. Amen? That's what God wants to do. Take away. Take away the influence of the enemy and restore the victory of Jesus. Amen. Father, we thank you for your word this morning. Lord, we're here to pray for those who need it. Lord, we pray for everyone, Lord, who is going through situations within their lives. Right now, Lord, that are here in this building, Lord, who are by the internet, Lord, we pray for their situations. Whether it be children, whether it be parents, whether it be brothers, whether it be sisters, whether it be husbands, whether it be wives, no matter what, Lord, that the enemy has taken and gained influence. In the name of Jesus, we break that chain and we loose the Holy Spirit to do a work, Lord, of healing and restoration within their life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. You believe it? I believe it. God said it. It is done. God bless you and keep you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah.